Hello there. My name's Andrew, and I'm 18 years old. I'm fair, smart, and loved by everyone in my college. Girls have a crush on me. During my school days, I was popular for being a topper in studies and other curricular activities. In my list of friends, the number of girls was more as compared to boys. I was sincere in studies during my school hours. After school, I used to go to football practice and then hang around with my friends. Before the day would end, I would return back to my home and join my parents for dinner. From all of my friends, there was one of my girlfriends named Macy, who was very close to me. After dinner, I would daily talk to her. We'd keep chatting and talking late hours until midnight. My life was happening, and it was full on busy. Years passed by, and I was promoted to class tenth. All my teachers had good expectations of me, as I was giving most of my time to my studies. Lecture after lecture, I kept on studying. I even started skipping my lunch breaks. I was very serious for my tenth examinations, and so after school, I started sitting in my school library for studying, skipping my football practice. This continued for a few months. One day, I was parking my bicycle, and a guy came to me and asked, "Do you know Macy?" I was watching him, confused and wondering why he was asking me about Macy, and how does he know her? I replied, "Yes, I know her, but who are you to ask me all these questions?" He said that he was her brother. Brother? Macy has a brother? But I don't remember Macy having any brother. She never told me about her brother. He kept on talking about her. And said she's suffering from some disease, that she's hospitalized and treatment is ongoing. Finally, he uttered that Macy is sick and will not be coming back to school. I decided to meet Macy after school, but by the end of the day, I forget that I have to meet Macy. I reached home and found no one there. I was very hungry, so I immediately rushed to the kitchen to get something to eat, but I found nothing, and finally ended up eating cornflakes with milk. I was tired with too many lectures that day. Then I went to my room, freshened up, and jumped straight to the bed to sleep. After some time, my mobile phone started ringing. I received a call, and guess who it was talking on the other side? Hey, I'm Macy's brother. You were supposed to visit the hospital today. Macy was waiting for you. Hospital? I exclaimed. You didn't tell me she was in a hospital. You just told me she was sick. Oh gosh, that was unpredictable behavior of mine. Her brother got angry at me and disconnected the call. I kept wondering, when did he say Macy was in the hospital? And then, my home doorbell rang. I went to the door and opened it. My parents were there. As soon as they entered, my mom asked me, "What's for dinner?" I shockingly asked her, "Come again?" My mom said I told her this morning about arranging dinner for tonight. I told her, "Mom." I don't remember you telling me all of this. She said yes. She told me to arrange dinner before we come. I quietly rushed to my room, took my phone, and ordered ravioli and pasta for all of us. Then I sat on my bed, worried, and was thinking about what was happening since this morning. Why don't I remember anything? Then my mom came to my room and asked me why I was looking so tense. I told her everything that was happening since this morning. I also said that I should go to the doctor for a checkup, but my mom was against my decision. She exclaimed that I was fine, no need to visit a doctor. The next day in the school library, my crush Jackson came and asked me, "Let's meet today and go on a date." That moment, I was feeling so wonderful, as if I was flying in the sky. She asked me to meet her at 6 p.m. outside the school gate, and she went. I continued studying. And around 5 p.m., I got a call from my mom. That was, in fact, a reminder call. I had asked her to call me and remind me that I have to visit Macy at the hospital. I was wrapped up in everything and rushed there. I reached the hospital at around 5:45 p.m. and met Macy. She was so happy to see me. She kept on talking and she was telling me about her sickness and the experiences from the past few days. And after some time, my mobile phone rang. Yes, Jackson was on the call. I received the call and asked her why was she calling me. Jackson got angry on the phone. She shouted, "Are you nuts? You were supposed to meet me at 6 p.m. to go out." And then I questioned her back. "Is it?" Whoa! Such a terrible thing had happened, and it was because of me. I didn't know what was happening to me. Why don't I remember anything?
Nowadays, I seem to be fine and rarely forget stuff. But at that time, that habit was so frequent. If you have any idea what might be wrong with me, share your answer in the comment section below. Also, if you liked my story, then share it with your family and friends. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon for more updates. Hey there, my name is Nancy. Well, most people out there would have kissed someone and their partner would have still supported them. However, in my own case, it's a different story than you all. There was a boy named Michael and everyone in the high school felt delighted to see him anytime. And I also felt the same thing. On that day, it was his birthday and all the girls from the high school wished him a happy birthday. I wished him though. He had thrown his birthday party that night and had invited all the guys and girls of high school. That same day, I was searching for a book in the library and he came over to me and asked if I had any plans for that night. I said no without hesitation and he asked if I could join his birthday party. At that moment, I was feeling on top of the world that the most adorable guy asked me to join his birthday party. But without showing my emotions to him, I just said, Yes, sure, that sounds good. After school that day, I literally ran all the way home to find the best outfit to wear for that special night. I removed all my clothes from my wardrobe, took an hour to decide what attire to wear. Finally, I wore a sexy black dress and rushed to the party. As I reached the destination, I found the party to be well organized with all my high school classmates dancing on the dance floor. Few were partying on the bar, but I was yet to see Michael anywhere. So I went to the bar, got a glass of mojito, and settled down on the couch beside the bar. I was just chilling out when Michael came up to me and asked for help. He had cut his thumb and wanted help in finding first aid box. I felt Maybe he wants to spend time with me because he was taking me away from the party. I was highly strung and also excited. With this feeling, I went along with my crush. We reached his room and started searching for first aid box everywhere. We searched in the wardrobe, a small cabinet, a side table, drawer, etc., but could not find it. Lost in the thought of a first aid box, we both were walking back from the opposite direction and collide with each other. We both fell onto the floor and started laughing. We started talking to each other and got to know each other better. We were having a lot of fun and I was getting infatuated on him more than before. I felt that even he had also started liking me. I pondered on the thought that we actually came here in search of the first aid box and then we were sitting and talking for so long. I was getting loving vibes from Michael and suddenly he started leaning toward me as if leaning in for a kiss. Without giving it a thought, I just grabbed him and kissed him on the lips. I was actually kissing my crush for real and it was amazing. And suddenly Michael pushed me away and said, hey, have you lost? I was so embarrassed and confused. I told him, stammering, what, what, we, well, you leaned in for a kiss, right? Oh, no, that was a wrong assumption. He pointed behind me to reveal that the first aid box was lying under the chair behind me. He was reaching for the first aid box. It was so awkward and embarrassing for me. My ears were waiting to hear that he enjoyed it, but there was just silence. I didn't know what to do, so I ran out of the party, out of the house, and started whining. It had gone from so stupendous to such an unsuccessful love story. If you also have such experiences in the past, you can share it in the comments section below. Hit the like button if you liked my story and subscribe to this channel to watch more of such videos. Hey friends, my name is Kaya, I'm 26 years old and my best friend's name is Emma. We are the same age. Emma and I were the best of buddies right from boarding school up to college. We had many friends, but our friendship was really special. 
We could always count on each other. We used to hang out together. We used to laugh, cry, and had loads of fun together. We used to share everything with each other and were there for help always. Life was easy and fun with her. Remember, this happens with everyone. Eventually, we completed college. My best friend Emma got a job in a multinational company. I was happy for her. And now, she got busy in her work. But every single day, we used to text and a phone call each other. We were hanging out together practically every week. Although after joining her work, she was giving less time to our friendship every time she had some or the other reasons to not responding. But when this started happening often, I realized she is ignoring me. She used to always want to hang out with me, but suddenly she gets busy. Whenever I used to call her up, she had her excuses ready like she wanted to focus on her career and all. But I used to see her hanging out with her new friends and other people. I thought, that's okay. She's doing her own thing. Everybody finds new friends at their workplace. But still, I used to text or message her because you can't forget your old friends, right? One day, I messaged her this. I miss you. Let's go to dinner. There is a new restaurant that serves amazing sushi. I know you love Japanese food. She replied, Hey Kaya, sorry I have to go out with my mum for groceries. The same evening, I went to the store, thinking I might bump into her. While coming back from the store, I saw Emma on a bike, sitting behind a guy. I hid myself and saw that she was with John, a guy who used to study with us in college. I was devastated. I felt cold and numb. This feeling of being cheated on by your best friend was killing me. How can she? I considered her my everything. And she didn't even care telling me? I decided to confront her. I went to her place and asked her why she's behaving like this. Hey darling, surprise! Uh, oh, hey Kaya, what happened? Well, can I come in? Yeah, come in. Listen Emma, I think there is something wrong between us. I mean, perhaps I'm overreacting, but I really miss you. Listen, Kaya, you have no right to invade my privacy, and you don't need to control my life. What? Don't act innocent. I'm dating John. You know John, right? Yes. He told me about you. Who are you to decide if I should date him or not? He just requested you to help him be friends with me, right? The truth is... I was afraid of losing Emma. I loved Emma so much. As a girl, she wanted more than what I could offer. I just didn't want to lose her. I'd seen this guy, John, with a lot of other girls, and none of them were happy after he left them for his next target. I wished Emma the best in life, and that was the end of our friendship. Life lesson? Friends' life goes on. I realized... People are there in your life, not for you, but for themselves. They will be there till they feel their needs are being fulfilled. One day, they will be out of sight and out of mind. If you have such kind of experience, you can share it in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you liked my story, and subscribe to this channel to watch more such videos in the future.